Meghan cradles her baby bump on Sydney Beach before she and Harry kick off their shoes to join an anti-bad vibe circle with surfers ahead of school visit and the Prince's Harbour Bridge climb. Prince Harry and Meghan thrilled thousands of royal fans at Sydney's Bondi Beach, joining an anti-bad vibe circle on the iconic stretch of sand, before heading to a girls' school to meet and greet students. During their visit to the world-famous beach, which kicked off the fourth day of a whirlwind Australian tour, Meghan spoke candidly about her pregnancy, while Harry was praised for his openness about his mental health battles. The prince kicked off issues as soon as he hit the Bondi sand on Friday morning, before his beaming wife, wearing a khaki maxi dress by Australian designer Martin Grant, followed suit and unstrapped her heeled wedges. The pair were presented floral lays as they took part in Fluoro Friday, a mental health awareness session organized by local surfing group One Wave. As the group chatted on the sand, Meghan told another expectant mother she found her pregnancy experience rather like jet lag. Following the Bondi visit, the mother and father-to-be arrived at MacArthur Girls' School in Parramatta shortly after students had finished a final year exam. Meghan changed from her Martin Grand Beach dress into a sleeveless navy frock with a pale blue band on the bottom of the skirt by Roxanda. The design, which retails for $2,376, GBP 1,295 pounds, is Meghan's first nod to the British fashion industry while on tour. Harry slipped on a dark navy blazer and checkered shirt, wearing the same beige he knows he'd on while chatting to locals on the sand at the world-famous beach. The location of the school visit was supposed to have been kept secret from students, but secrets are hard to keep in the era of social media. Most of you would probably have got up this morning got ready for school and turned up thinking it was going to be a normal day at school. Is that right? New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian asked an assembly before the royal's arrival. The answer was unanimously no. The Premier added, You knew I was coming, did you know anyone else was coming? To which the room replied, Yes. But the whole school erupted in shrieks and cheers as Harry and Meghan walked into the assembly. The pair smiled as group of dancers entertained the loved-up royal guests with a performance to the Frankie Goes to Hollywood version of The Power of Love, before they spent time talking to students about the girls' social justice project and youth empowerment. The Duchess of Sussex told the students how her upbringing at an all-girls school and her first job taking out the trash has made her the person she is today. Meghan, who has even put her feminist manifesto on the Buckingham Palace website, said she felt emotional hearing their passionate views of the students. Harry, who is now said to identify as a feminist, told the girls he wants men to add their voices to the fight for equality. Men can help as well by getting involved, we have to, he said. We need to get men's voices involved as soon as possible. His wife, who has been a long-term advocate for women's rights, told students that their projects, including making boxes of supplies for women in need, made her proud. You guys all remind me so much of myself when I was growing up, she told 14-year-old girls. I went to an all-girls school which was incredibly diverse as well. I think being around such empowered young women, it becomes something that you all just grasp onto to understand your world. It's made you confident, well-spoken. You have an intention set to really do something to change the world, and you have to keep it up. It makes me so emotional. You're doing really really good work and I'm so happy that we're here. We give you our full support. Don't stop, the prince reiterated. Get more people involved, guys as well. Teachers explained that the girls have been taking an integrated course on top of their usual studies, to give them 21st century capabilities including creativity and critical thinking, with a core focus on making a change in local communities. One project saw them make boxes of supplies to donate to vulnerable women via police stations and refuge centers, while in another they created notebooks to pass forward for students to write about the women who have inspired them. Coincidentally, one pupil had written about the Duchess long before the royal visit had been announced. Talia Henhun, 15, told the Duke and Duchess how another group had created picture books to teach younger children about poverty and encourage them to treat those less fortunate with kindness and empathy. The couple nodded as Talia added, The younger you get your children educated on things like this, the easier it is for them to grow up and be aware of it and make a difference. Kindness and empathy lacks big time in the world, 
Harry said, it's so great you are passionate about all of this. You realize this is the generation that's going to make all the difference? Later, the Duke and Duchess were introduced to teenage boys and girls from the NRLs and League and Harmony project, which aims to unite young people from diverse communities to be advocates for positive change in their communities. Sitting separately, with a mixed-sex group each, the couple listened to young people's growing up in Australia in day-to-day -day lives. As one young man told the Duchess about his part-time job, she empathized, My first job when I was 14, I remember taking out the trash, all sorts. It give you a good work ethic, right? She joined groups of students from across different schools and Cindy who have been introduced via the program, which teaches them, everybody belongs. It's so important, said the Duchess. All these people you know of in your neighborhood? Now you know them when you are united. You are proud of where you're from. You can champion where you're from and make people see it for what it is. Harry, sitting with a second group of youngsters, joked that he was clinging on to my youth at the age of 34, said he now looked to the younger generation for inspiration. We are so lucky that wherever we go in the world, we're finding young people like you guys, he said. This sweeping wave of kindness and optimism and empathy that seems to be lacking in some of the previous generation. You guys get a kick out of that, right? Prince Harry, who is known for his mental health advocacy and co-founded the charity Heads Together in 2016, earlier told One Wave members in Bondi that mental issues don't discriminate. Harry said each and every one of us will experience poor mental health at some stage in our lives, said Charlotte Connell. 35. Harry said it took me not six months, but 18 months to find the right person to speak to. You're not going to find the right person to speak to straight away. In recent years, Harry has opened up about own struggles following the death of his mother, Princess Diana, in 1997 when he was just 12. Charlotte Connell, who is 23 weeks pregnant, revealed what Meghan told the group about her early stages of pregnancy. Meghan said she was up at 4.30 am this morning doing yoga in her room as she couldn't sleep, she said. It's a bit of a double whammy for her, she said, as she has both the baby and the jet lag to contend with. We both talked about how you feel jet lagged even though you have not traveled anywhere. Even in her jet lag she got up to do yoga this morning at 4.30 am. Physical activity like yoga and surfing is so good for healing your mind. As she left, Megan told the group that she was loving her first experience of Australia. It is so great to be here, she said. Dabri Eulick Whale, 37, said after the anti-bad vibe session, Oh my goodness, they were just so real, so relatable. They shared their own experiences, which was amazing. Harry said seeking help was the best thing he had ever done. He was really open and honest. He said it doesn't matter who you open up to, they don't have to be professional. Anyone can be there for you. It could be your best mate or a stranger. You just need to open up to them. Ems Quayle added, they talked about the strangeness of their own situation and the lives they lead but that at the end of the day they are just real people. They are just human beings. One way founder Grant Trebilco said the royal couple had been so nice so friendly. They were so open. Harry said asking for help was not a sign of weakness but a sign of strength. We need to talk about this stuff. No matter what you are going through you don't have to do it alone, he said. Megan shared how yoga is her escape. She does yoga daily and how her mum is a yoga instructor. Harry talked about how everyone has their different recipe and how much sports can help with your mental health. He said he and Megan had surfed before. We tried to get him in and told him we had a wetsuit and surfboard ready for him, but he said he couldn't. They were so engaging, they had time for everyone and really felt part of the One Wave community. Mr. Trebleco suffered from mental health issues for a decade but felt unable to talk about them. He was eventually diagnosed as being bipolar and hospitalized. He said surfing was his savior and he finally felt able to open up to his closest friends who were incredibly sympathetic to him and also shared issues of their own. He then created Fluoro Fridays, where people dress up in fluorescent clothes and go to the beach, with the aim of fostering an atmosphere where others can open up about their own mental health issues.